Hi everybody, welcome to this follow-up stream of my first uh, video looking at using the guidance steering mod or GPS mod for FS2019. Um, this video has been requested by Farm Like a Bomb to go into some more detail um, on the back of the first video I did. Um, if you're not familiar with the guidance steering mod at all, then I'd suggest you look at that first video. Um, and if you, it's also good for some, just some handy hints and tips on getting basic field work done setting up courses properly uh, and making adjustments on the fly um, this course is going to this is going to be a bit more detailed this particular video we're going to be looking at how to set a course using the a to heading mode rather than the a to b mode we're going to look at how to use an offset for devices like plows and mowers and how to invert offsets for, for devices such as plows and mower, plow and mowers that you can't flip the orientation of on the fly um, uh, that also applies to uh, things like offset balers and stuff like that. So if you want to set a course for them, I think the um, can't remember what it is now. There's there's definitely at least one baler I can I can remember using that that is offset slightly. Um, and then how to adjust courses on the go when you're sort of doing multiplayers and that kind of thing. Let's say you're playing with someone who's got a course set and for whatever reason you can't load that course or you've got a course in and they can't adjust to it. I'll show you the controls for tweaking a course left and right and increasing and decreasing the width of the device um, or the assumed width of the device to avoid crashes and that kind of stuff. So, first thing we need to do is look at a couple of controls. So in your keyboard controls in the main menu, scroll down quite a long way until you get to the guidance steering controls. So there'll be GS here. Uh, and the controls we're looking for are increase and decrease track width and in, uh, shift track right and shift track left. Um, these are the default settings. So if you're happy with those, leave them as they are. Obviously, if you want to change them, change them. Uh, but these are the controls you'll need to be able to adjust the course on the fly. Right, let's crack on with doing a bit of plowing. So we've got this John Deere set up with a decent size plow here. Uh, oh, and we're approaching the edge of this field this field here so let's get ourselves over here now first things first the plow is unfolded and it's it's set to its maximum working width that's the the narrow way of running it but we want to run it wide like that which sticks it out to the side a bit it means we're going to have to have an offset to work with so it gives us better coverage and it means we're not going to be plow driving our tractor through bits of land we've already ploughed which is good but it means that we've got an offset we need to fix so because the center of the plow is not in line with the center of the tractor so if you set it to follow the lines of the tractor you're always going to, you're constantly going, going to be going back over bits you've already done or you're going to be skipping bits um, and i'll show you what i mean by that in, in a little while so let's bring up the guidance steering menu and the first thing I'll do is I'll show you this, this new course setting piece. So instead of using the A to B setting, we're going to use A to heading. What that allows you to do is simply type in the direction in degrees that you want the tractor to follow. This is a north-south field, so in this particular alignment we're going at zero or 360 degrees. And as we come back down, we're going 180 degrees. So zero degrees is what we want. We'll enter that in and we will have a zero degree course which is what we want. If we go in here and set it to say 90 degrees, it'll go to 90 degrees. Now this by default, if you've got snap terrain angle on, this will always snap whatever you type in here to the nearest 45 degrees. So if I type in 30 degrees, I actually get a 45 degree course. If I type in um, 10 degrees, I get a north-south course. However, if I take the snap terrain angle off, go back here and put in 10 degrees again, I now get a 10 degree course. So this is really handy if you're playing on a map like, um, I don't know, something like Sandy Bay or Marwell, where you've got some fields that are oddly aligned that don't really fit with the north, south, east, west, or aren't, aren't to the nearest 45 degrees. You can actually specify the angle you want without having to use the A to B setting. Um, most of the time, though, having that on, having that on is is a, is a good thing. Um, and say so we, we're going to go on a zero degree course, so we're fine. 
Now we also need it in here to set our auto width. When we do that, as long as we've got our plow unfolded and set it up, it will also automatically set the offset. Now I will reset that again as we enter the field because we've just um, we've just opened the, the plow, so there's a chance that it's gonna it's not quite tracking dead straight. The wheels look pretty straight, but it might tweak slightly, and if that happens, the offset will need to be tweaked. So we're gonna look at where those lines are. Now what this is telling me is the red line is the line that the tractor is going to follow if I lock the GPS on. The white line should be the center of the plow and the yellow lines should be the edges of the plow. Now that hasn't happened um, and this is because the, the, the system's detecting the width of the plow correctly and it's detecting the offset from the center of the tractor. It knows what the offset should be but it doesn't necessarily know which way I'm pointing the plow. It doesn't know whether I've unfolded it to the right or whether I've unfolded it to the left. And as it is, in this particular example, it's the wrong way round. Now, to be fair, I don't actually want to plow this way round, so I, I'm gonna flick the plow over. And then what will happen is, as I drive forward, you'll see that the plow will line up with these yellow lines. If the plow was the right way round, and I was happy with the right way around the plow was, instead of doing that, I would click on invert offset. And that would flick the lines over so that if I float, fold that back again, the plow would have been correctly aligned. Yeah. But I know that I want the plow to be this way. I want the, I want the leading edge to be on the left hand side so that I'm not um, traipsing back through the area I've already plowed when I come back down the field. So I can take that invert off. I can set my GPS to follow that line and I'm gonna start moving forward. And then I'm gonna drop the plow. We might have a little bit missed at the start of the field. Now it looks like it's lined itself up. So you can see there the yellow lines are lined up with the edges of the plow. The red line is the center of the tractor and the green line is the center of the plow. Now I'm gonna go back into here and I'm gonna recalculate the auto width and you see the inverts change, that's changed slightly because it's, it, it, now the plow is following exactly in line. It doesn't need as much width as it's thought. I'm gonna, there we go, we can keep going again. It won't actually change what I'm, what I'm tracking, but it needs that calculation for when I make the turn. Otherwise we would miss bits. So we'll get to the end here. turn off the, the steering lock, raise the plow and flip it over and whilst it's flipping we'll, we'll turn the tractor out. And again I'm looking to get to, the red line is going to be the tractor so I'll get fairly close to that and put the lock on. Start driving forward, lower the plow and there we go we've got a perfectly We've got a perfectly plow field. Now, the problem comes with this when you have either a plow that will not invert, so you can't actually flip it over, or you've got a uh, baler or something like that, that, or a mower that's always offset to one side and doesn't flip to the other side. So you can't keep resetting the course every time. And what happens with those kind of things, I'll show you here. If I make this turn now without flipping the plow, you'll see I've got a massive area here where I'm overhanging. Nearly half the plough is overhanging into the area of the field that I've already done and I don't want that. So let's back this up and we'll flip the plough over whilst we're reversing. Yeah, so in this particular instance I've been wasting time and I'll show, I'll show you at the other end the, the, off side of the, the opposite side of that. So let's do this run here. Okay, I'm going to turn at the top and I'm not going to um, flip the plow over and you'll see um, we'll see what happens there we go that's the end of that lift it up 
So again, not flipping the plough, making the turn. Get ourselves onto the red line. And you see here again, you've got a massive, you've got a massive offset. You're going to plough something that you, um, you're going to have an overlap you don't want to have. Which is not what we're after. And then when I come to the end and turn the other way. Because it's been on the wrong track, when we come back down, we now are missing an entire section. So you're going to have an overlap on one side and miss stuff on the way back down. Now this is easily fixed. get everything correctly aligned so I know that the right um, that the invert needs to be the other way around. I've got offset reverse on. I'm going to follow this course. It's just pulling into the line now. Just so that we can see it um, working properly. It's actually easier to demonstrate this on something like the mowers because um, they just don't move. <laughs> but hopefully you're getting the general idea. And then we'll unlock the course with the plow. And as I turn, the red and white line will swap over. So the red line is the other way around. Ooh. difficult to do on this field really but there you go and you see we're now once it's once it starts running in a straight line you can see we're tracking nicely so it's up to you which method you want to use personally I think if you're plowing it's I think it's easier not to use the offset just pick the plow at the end of each run but obviously if you're not using a plow or if you're using a, um, a mower or a plow that won't flip then use the invert offset sorry the offset is it the offset reversal, sorry, um, and that will solve any problems you'll have with missing bits. So that's your using um, using your offsets. We're now going to have a look at uh, combining. So I don't quite know why I've, I did this in the last video. I ran to a device I could have just jumped to. Anyway, we've got a couple of combines set up here. I haven't set the course. The course you can see there is actually the course for the plow. It's transferred across because that's the, the course that's currently loaded. So what I'm actually going to do, because we need this for demonstrating later, is I'm going to save this course. I'm going to call it plow one. And I'm going to click this button to add it to the list. That is now the saved course. That is the only saved course. Um, and that is all I have to do to get it to save. It is now definitely in there. So let's go to our combine again. Now if I see here, that is the loaded course for this device because it's the only course that's currently in the in the in the list. So I need to create a, a course to be able to do my own thing. So I'm gonna move up to the edge of the field here. Make sure we're going to capture everything. Not quite, there we go. I'm going to use the heading feature rather than messing around. So now I know I've got the right line and I'm going to auto width and you see it's lost the offset and it's set the width of this header. And now I'm going to click on that, delete plow one from there. Notice I haven't clicked on anything else, just in the name box. And I'm going to call this harvest one or half one. And then click on here. 
that is now the active course for this device. I can see that because that's clearly yeah, this this harvester. Yeah. If I go back in here and click on plough one and come out and move forward, now I've got the ploughing course. Yeah. Go back in, click on harvest one, move forward. I've got the harvesting course. Yeah. And this is where people go wrong with the course save settings. It's really easy to go, oh I've clicked on the plough course and it's gone in there, but the lines haven't come up, so I've done something wrong. I must have to click on this. Look what happens when I do that. So I'm going to click on save. Uh, sorry, I mean, I, yeah, let's say I've got, I'm on the plough course. I actually want the harvester course. So I go in here, I click on harvester, and I come out. Oh, well, that's not right. It's misaligned. It can't be the right course. Yeah. So they go back in here and go, well, that's not right. They click on the plough course again and go, that's still not right. I don't know what to do. So then go, they can go into the oh, right. Okay, that harvester course, yeah, must be in the wrong place. So then, at some point, what you have is they'll they'll end up clicking the save button and overwriting what they're actually doing over the top of a perfectly good course. So if I um, go to that one, oh, that's so I've got the plough course up and I've not realised. I go, well, I don't want that. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to set my own heading. And I'm going to save it. That's now adjusted the plough course. It's now moved it over. That's not what we wanted. Yeah. So all you got to do is click on the course you actually need and just move slightly. If it looks like it's off, it's probably because you haven't set the auto width correctly. And I'll demonstrate that again in a, in a little bit as to why that makes such a massive difference. So let's lock onto this course. We'll back up a bit so it aligns better run her forward and get it going. Okay, and we've got a nice tidy course, the widths look good, everything's fantastic. Right, so we'll leave that there, and then we'll go back to this. So now, in order to get a perfect course, all I should have to do is go into go into GPS, turn on GPS, go in here, and click hard one, and it should that populate in there. Come out, go back in. Now I don't want to write to it because that will overwrite harvest one with the course I'm currently on. And I don't want that. And this is this is why things can can go wrong. So let's go into harvest. Go on to plow course one. Then let's go on to harvest course one. There we go, now it's lined up. And that's the kind of thing you've got to do, you've got to load up alternate courses sometimes to get onto the right course. Set up a course yourself, save it, click between courses until it eventually gives you the right course. It will do it eventually, it's just not always perfect. Now that should mean that if I lock onto this line here, get it going. we should find that we are close but not touching but unfortunately if you look at the lines on these harvesters that is not going to be the case I'm going to come running into this and that's because of the width the course is set to not the line it's on but the width of the course now if I just stop this harvester here the way to fix this is to get the person on the first line to adjust their width and then override the course. And it only happens with some tools. Most tools, the yellow lines actually come further left and further right of the of the tool. But with this one, it doesn't. 
so we need to use the um, increase width that we saw in the uh, in the tool tips and you see it only increases by a fraction at a time and I don't need it to increase by a lot I just need it to increase enough so it's the yellow dot is just to the offset just to the outside edge of that and you only want the one person to do this the person's on the leading track yeah um, and then again you can see on that side it's it's now looking much better I zoom out a bit looks like we're there or thereabouts now so we shouldn't clash now what I need to do is I need to go back into the GPS menu and it's now increased the width see the width was not 18.21 feet I'm gonna go in here and I'm on harvest one already I'm gonna click this overwrite button and that has written that would have written 18.21 to the save back into the GPS menu it's at 18.2. If I flick between the two, that's the plow course, that's the harvest course. It stayed at 18.21 feet, good. So I'll drop the header down, follow the course. And what will happen is the harvester will move very fractionally to the left. You see, it's hard to tell, but we're, we're, now, we're now slightly more to the left it's it's kept the right and the right edge of the field pretty much where it was but it's tweaked the saver very fractionally it's hard to tell but if I stop that now and go back to the other harvester let's see if we can get it to pick up this course automatically I don't think it's gonna but we'll try so we're gonna plow no nope. get a harvest one Right, that looks like it's adjusted. Certainly adjusted the line. You see the yellow line is now into the wheat slightly. 18.21, um, there you go, it's, it's caught up. So now, as I roll forward, I, I haven't moved the harvester off the line, but because we've had to adjust over a couple of feet for this second line, the harvester is gonna move to the left. There we go. So it's only the first harvester that's, oh, whoops that's made the change or had the change made but it's affecting both now we've moved the line over enough so that we're we're, we're not going to have let's turn that off i don't want straw swat on um i've moved the line over enough that we're still gonna we're not gonna hit or at least we shouldn't but not so much that we're missing crop let, let's see there we go, we are perfectly passing. Let's raise that up so you can see it's not a, when they're parallel. Yeah, we've got the gap we need now. Yeah. The reason it's important to make sure the widths pick up as well is as you go further across the field, that adjustment will make more and more of a difference. So if I I've got I've got the course loaded turn around and run back down to the other end it'll be easier to show you that way now it counts up from the starting row it always counts you know it counts the number of rows and the reason for that is the width of each row is important obviously so that, to get the count right now if I reset the header width on this to 16.4 which is the default and I move in say four or five rows like this because we've decided we're going to split the field like this for example yeah. and roll forward because I'm working on a different width there, there will be by this stage quite a significant difference in the rows so I've come in a little bit going to the GPS let's raise that up come into the GPS um, and I want to tweak I want to change the course so let's reload harvester one which now has 18.2 meters. See how far off that white line is now. It's now a whole, it's half a header width wrong because every one of those, every row we come across was slightly narrower than it needed to be. But the good thing is now if I correct onto this course, set this running. Once you're all using the same course, you can trust it to work. 
So if I grab this other combine here that's running exactly the same course with exactly the same widths, let's go and cut, cut over in front of this dude. That's the line he's on. Let's take that line. I'll be precise enough that I can trust that we're going to go past each other. Close, but it works. So that's the that's the period really, which you which you it's 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 worth knowing about adjusting courses left and right and increasing and decreasing the width. But don't everyone try it. If you're finding that the auto detect of a header or a trader or whatever it is you're using, plow or whatever, is wrong get one person to tweak it so that it's visibly correct and you're just going to pass each other without without hitting one another save the course and get everyone to load the correct course you will have to say that you need to have courses in there to click through you saw i couldn't just load harvest one without having an alternate course from a different device to click through to and back out of but once you've got a selection of courses in there you can with a single click load the right course the important thing is, once you've made that click, so if I go in here now, oh, um, where are we? What am I doing? Uh, if I go in here now and click on Plow One, I can't see that course until I move. You have to move a little bit, just creep forward or backward an inch or two, and then you'll see what course it is you've actually loaded. Go back to Harvest 1, there it is, and Harvest 1 has a width of 18.21, which is what we wanted, whereas Harvest 2 has a width of 16.4, which is the default, and isn't going to work. Yeah. So I hope that's helped to clarify um, some questions that people have had. Um, obviously, if there's anything else you'd like to know, please do let me know, um, and I'll do my best to... Um, Put something together for you um or maybe something if it's course play or something like that i'm kind of getting the hang of that now as well um or if there's anything in this video that's been confusing or anything else you want to know please do let me know um so i hope it's been worthwhile um and i will try and make sure i pop up a link for the first video at the end of this one as well so you can have a look at that if you haven't already thanks very much for your time take care Bye bye